this video I'm going to show you some secret features of Ableton Live. They make the production process easier, more enjoyable and allow you for much more customization of the program. Some of these hidden gems also improve the sound of effects or give you additional creative processing capabilities. Just a quick reminder, if you like what you see in this tutorial, make sure to subscribe to our channel. We're making all kinds of Ableton tutorials like this one. And if you'd like to learn Ableton a bit more in depth, check out our Ableton Beginners course, which gives you all the knowledge you need to start confidently building and finishing your tracks. And also make sure to check out the article on our website, which will be linked below the video, where you will find all of these tips in written format, as well as some additional very helpful links. Let's get started. Tip number one, hiding the global overview. If you are one of the Ableton Live users who does not really enjoy looking at the global overview window, you might be happy about the fact that you can actually completely disable this and free up some space on your screen. I'm talking of course about this box over here, which basically allows you to have an overview of what you're looking at in the project. Yeah, you can resize this by dragging this up and down, but actually sometimes it's useful to have this disabled. And in fact, it's very easy to turn this feature off. All you need to do is just go to the toolbar and under view find overview and as you can see here it also works as a shortcut so command option O and on Windows Alt Control and O. Tip number two is using the options.txt hidden functions. So the options.txt file comes from earlier versions of Ableton and it allows for customization of the program beyond what's possible in the preferences and some of its functionalities not all of them work well with Ableton Live 11 still so I'll show you quickly how to create Create this text file. So first you need to create a plain text file using a plain text editor like text edit on Mac or notepad on Windows and you need to create an options.txt file and you need to save it in a certain folder so I will show you where the folder lies. We are looking at the folder right here and it's actually located in the preferences folder. To be able to go inside the preferences folder, it's actually quite tricky. So you need to go into finder. In the go tab, you need to hold alt or option and a library is going to appear right here. You need to click on it, find preferences here, not preference panes, but preferences. And inside Ableton, you will find your current version of live. And here you can actually save your options.txt file. So for example, we can add a cool function called enable arm on selection and basically what this cool function does is arms your tracks whenever it's selected so you don't have to click arm whenever you want to record and I'm going to just save this and in life you might have to restart the program yeah but in my case whenever I click on a different track it's working first you might have to arm just one track but after that whenever you change the selection of the track you automatically arm the track and if you are using a Windows machine and you would like to do this, this is of course possible as well. But in the description, I have linked an article on our blog where I go into detail on how to do this. So check out that link if you're working on Windows. And in that blog post, you will also find the link with a complete list of features which are possible to add with this options.txt file. I think there's a lot to be explored here. Okay, tip number three, changing the metronome sound. If you are annoyed by Ableton's very sharp metronome sound, this can also be changed and in Live 11 actually we have a very handy feature here when you can already change the sound of the metronome from the program you have three metronome sounds to choose from for example the classic mode this is what the default Ableton sound is I'm sure you guys are familiar with this sound then we have a click this is quite pleasant this is an electronic click I quite like this one and then there's wood So a sound with a wood block as well. But actually, if you would like to substitute the classic sound for something completely different, for example, you would like to generate or design your own metronome sound, this is of course possible as well. And I'm going to show you how to do this on Mac. And if you're working on Windows, again, link in the description, you'll find the blog post with specific instructions for Windows. So if you're working on a Mac, all you need to do is just right click on your app inside applications with Ableton Live 11 and go to show package contents. Inside the contents folder, you go to app resources, miscellaneous, 
and then you go to metronome and here inside the samples folder you have metronome.wave and metronome up that way you can actually copy this onto your desktop if you would like to substitute this back again for the default sound but basically if you substitute these two samples with your own samples with the same names Ableton is going to load them up and basically you will have the classic sound changed for something completely different. Tip number four turning off analysis files so the ASD files you might be also annoyed by the fact that whenever you import a sample in Ableton Live, it automatically creates an ASD file, which basically contains some information about how the thing should be warped and so on. And this could clutter up your organization of files and avoiding this is incredibly easy. So you go into preferences and inside the file folder tab, basically you need to turn off the create analysis files option. You won't be having the ASD files loaded up by default next to your samples and you're free to go. Tip number five, equal loudness feature for the echo and delay audio effects. So unlike most audio effects, echo and delay have a special option which changes the way the dry wet knobs behave. It's accessed by right clicking on the dry wet knob and going to equal loudness. And with equal loudness on, the 50-50 mix is actually going to be a bit louder than without this option on. Might make the behavior of this knob more suitable for live performances, so whenever you mix in a bit of delay, you are not losing as much gain, so you don't have to compensate for the gain, for example, by turning up the volume of the overall track. For example, let me show you how this works. Okay, so for example, here we have a main lead sound. So we have a bunch of effects, but we don't have delay. So we might get echo here. And for example, let's not turn on the equal loudness yet. So as you can hear, whenever we are here at the midpoint, you already are losing a bit of gain. So we are introducing a bit of echo, but then the overall gain of our track is a bit lower. And in order to avoid this, we can turn on equal loudness. And now we will be introducing a bit of echo without losing as much gain. And if we compare this, it's a small difference, but if you mess around with it, maybe it's something for you. And the same feature is available in the delay audio effect right here. Tip number six, the oversampling feature inside EQ8 and glue compressor. So glue compressor and EQ8 both have a feature which makes the effect process the sound at twice the sample rate of the current project, which in some case it could reduce aliasing and transient harshness. And in order to turn these options on, first of all, I'll just load up EQ8 here and right click on the device name or the bar at the top and just select over sampling. This now is going to be using a bit more of your CPU, but sometimes this could result in a clearer sound. And the same option actually is possible with glue compressor. So right clicking here and going to over sampling. But just note that whenever you are using soft clipping here, it doesn't exactly cut the audio at minus 0.5 dB. The gain might actually exceed 0 dB here. So you would need to compensate for that after this effect whenever the over sampling feature is on. So if you're using the glue compressor, as a final element of your master chain, make sure to switch off the oversampling feature or make sure to turn down the gain after that. Tip number seven, audio to MIDI features. Ableton features plenty of options for turning your audio loops into MIDI and these options aren't so often used. You can access them by right clicking on an audio clip and selecting one of these options here. So here we have loaded up a grand piano, a chord sequence, And here we have uh, three options of converting an audio clip to MIDI. So first of all, we have harmony. So this is useful for chords, something like we have. We have convert melody to new MIDI track, which basically checks your sound for melodies and tries to decipher a melody and drums as well. So for example, let's take harmony and see what live can decipher out of our clip. So this is the result. 
As you can hear, this is really not perfect, but with some clips this works surprisingly well, with some clips it doesn't, but this might make it slightly useful for you if you are trying to decipher chords or if you're trying to edit a chord progression and you just have an audio sample, but at least it's going to give you a clue about what's going on harmonically. Also, we could take, for example, a drum loop and treat this the same way. Okay, so here we have a drum loop. And I will right click on it and go to convert drums to MIDI. And let's hear what we have. And it should work alongside of our clip. Yeah, so it actually created hi-hats on top of this. That's probably because we have quite a lot of high frequencies there. But yeah, other than that, it's quite perfect in this case. And the last option we have is slicing to MIDI. And this only works if you have warp turned on. It appears right here. If you select it, it asks you how you would like to slice to MIDI. For example, we can slice whenever we have a transient here and it's going to split our sound into separate slices. And basically, as you can see, the slices will correspond to each hit here. And the slices are put inside a drum rack with some nice features here like compression and uh, ADSR, really handy features. So let's hear what that sounds like. So it corresponds exactly to what we have and we can actually play custom patterns here. Yeah, so that would be it. This option is really, really cool. You can achieve a similar result by just dropping a sample inside the simpler and going to the slice mode. Yeah, so whichever option you prefer, uh, it's up to you. So tip number eight is integrating external programs as sample editors with Ableton Live. So Ableton doesn't really feature a really good auto-tune, for example, and Ableton's developers found a really cool way of transferring audio files directly to other software and then saving it back into Live. So to enable this, you need to go to File Folder and here you need to select a sample editor right here. So it says no sample editor has been selected. You need to click on the Browse button and find, for example, Melodyne, Autotune or Isotope RX. These are just some examples of what you could use and then and you click on an audio track inside the clip, inside the clip view, you need to click on this edit button right here. And this is basically going to open up, for example, Melodyne and you will be able to transpose these notes and edit that in depth. And then you just save it and it appears right inside the DAW without having to drag over samples and getting lost doing all of that. This feature is going to save you a lot of time if you frequently transport your samples into external editors of audio and back. Tip number nine, insert and cut time. These overlooked shortcuts prove to be incredibly useful when arranging. Once you have plenty of tracks with automations, adding an additional section in the middle of your tracks becomes harder as you would need to drag half of your project to the side. So for example, here we have our track. And if I would like to add a new section here, I would need to select all of this stuff and basically, for example, cut all of this and then find a new spot where it should start, for example, here and paste this in. And yeah, it doesn't have to work this way. It's really easy, in fact. There are really nice shortcuts for this. First, you need to just select how much time you want to add. And then on Mac, you press Command and I. And it basically adds this much time. And it also moves your time markers, so it's even better. On Windows, it's Control and I. And there are also nice options for cutting time, for example. So we have Command, Shift and X, and it just cut all of that time. This also works on Windows as Control, Shift and X. And if you would like to duplicate time, this is also really nice. So Command and Shift and D, and it duplicated this time. And the same on Windows, Control, Shift and D. Tip number 10 would be vibrato and tremolo effects. Vibrato and tremolo are really popular effects in music production, but Ableton doesn't feature these as separate devices. We can, however, use both of these effects really easily inside different audio effects. So vibrato is available from the chorus ensemble effect. It used to be done with frequency shifter, but now with chorus ensemble, it's even better. So inside chorus ensemble, you have this third option vibrato. You might be familiar with this already, but if you're not, it's just a matter of adjusting 
adjusting amount and rate and you get as much wobble as you want. Basically this allows you to add a bit of pitch fluctuation. You can also change the shape for a triangle like this and you can add warmth which is a really nice option but that's a separate feature. And then we have auto pan which allows you to add tremolo. First of all we need to add in a bit of amount and then we just reduce the face all the way down so let's try to preview this. Let's put these effects on a different track. I will drop a wavetable. Maybe let's just take a chord progression here. Here's a chord progression. Basically we add vibrato and increase the amount. And the same with Autopan. Yeah, so all that's needed here, just adjusting the rate and amount. And you have a really nice tremolo effect. Thank you very much for checking out these 10 tips. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you'd like to explore more, we're running a music production academy over on our website with start to finish courses on making tracks in various genres, as well as an Ableton beginners course in which you can learn all the necessary basics of production. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, leave us a like, write us a comment, and I will see you in the next tutorials. Hi, this video is sponsored by us. If you like these tutorials and want to support the channel, check out our website packed with online courses and professional sound packs. If you want to cut years of your learning curve, check the PML Beginner to Advanced Music Production program for Ableton Live. You will know Ableton inside out and learn how to write, produce, mix and master complete tracks. You learn step by step at your own speed from an empty file to professional production, as if we're sitting side by side in the studio. Thank you for listening.